coming in in the 15th position, Aaron Johnson. So what makes you so consistent and so tough in this event? I'm hard-headed. <laughs> <laughs> coming in in the 14th position, JJ Hampton. I'm 49 years old and to be healthy and to be able to perform I just, I, I praise him every night and thank him for, for these blessings. What are your expectations? I'm going to go kick ass. That's my expectation. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in in the 13th position, Hope Thompson. I loved horses. My, I didn't grow up in a rodeo family, but, you know, I had the support of my family and just getting around the right people. And, you know, I started out running barrels and, and doing the timed events like that. And uh, they said I always carried a rope around and had a rope in my hand, and that's that's what I wanted to do. So... You know, just their support and getting me around the right people to help me and and go on from there has just that's the path I wanted and I'm I'm super blessed that that's the one that I chose. Coming in in the twelfth position, Kirby Effort. How do you practice being that fast? <laughs> you know, some days it's it's amazing how simple it is, and some <laughs> days it's amazing how hard it is. In the number eleven position, Anna Bahi. Yeah, it started off really good. I was riding my Sorrel Roy, and we raised him. I got him from my uncle and grandpa's ranch in Gooding, Idaho. So we've had him since he was a baby. So it's been fun competing on him. I understand it was a tough year, though. Yes, we lost him last month. So that was pretty hard. Coming in in the 10th position, Macy Fuller. Well, I brought a couple out here with me, and I mainly rode a horse I bought from Cass Kaiser all summer. He's the reason I'm here. And uh, with the longer setup, I got a young horse that we raised, and I think it's going to be his time to shine out here. In the number nine position, Amanda Coleman. I grew up on a surfboard. I could surf before I could swim. I don't really know how I got into a rodeo. It kind of just happened. Um, didn't grow, in a, grow up in a rodeo family. Had horses at the house, and my dad would put me in a life jacket and take me to the beach, and... He said, when the board goes forward, stand up. And that's pretty much all I did. I surfed. I mean, I high school rodeoed and stuff, but I still, every summer at the beach. In the number eight position, Tanea Silverberg. Um, well, the first thing I learned was to drop coils. And the second thing I learned was to catch. And when you put that all together, you learn to be fast. And like my dad never gave him the option. He said, you take your first best shot, you go past that, you're not going to win anything, so you better throw your rope. And in the number seventh position, Shelby Beaujolais. I'm from Calgary, Alberta. Um, I grew up in a really small town called Langdon. Um, yeah, I came down to Stephenville about three years ago, four years ago now. So I haven't been in Texas very long, and it was a pretty rude awakening for me the first couple of years I was here. It was rough. Please welcome number six and the newest honoree going to be joining this museum, Larry D. Guy. You know, I knew that from a young age that I was going to, you know, I was going to rodeo. I ran barrels when I was younger, and a lot of people don't know that's my favorite event to watch. Um, but I decided that it really wasn't my best event that maybe roping was, so I took up roping. Coming in in the number five position, Katie Mundorf. When I had my daughter, I thought, you know, it takes sometimes forever to build a horse, so... Um, I thought if she ever wanted a horse that I wanted one ready when she was 8 or 10 or whatever. And um, <laughs> I forgot what a drug it was and, <laughs> and um, entered a few jackpots. And next thing you know, I was entering amateur rodeos and then going to some bigger jackpots and, and uh, finally pro rodeos. So. And here we are. Yep. And in the number four position, Jordan Fabrizio. You know, from the time that um, I was a little girl, I remember going to the all-girl rodeos and watching my, my mom competed and, and you guys, I remember JJ and Larry D. And, and so I've seen it when it was at that stage and then I, I saw, saw it evolve from there. And, you know, it's kind of cool that we've all sort of banded together. I know JJ puts on a big breakaway. Uh, we have a couple in Amarillo and just everywhere and we've kind of sparred each other on, you know, and we've seen the numbers grow and the added money grow and I think we fought, you know, and I'm, I'm proud to say that um, we were the group that, that helped to get here. Y'all started it and I think, you know, but I it think takes we're somebody just... else to carry the ball. Coming in in the third position, Martha Angelone. 
I'm actually from Cross Junction, Virginia. I came out here probably seven or eight years ago. When I think of Virginia, I don't think of rodeos and breakaway roping. Yeah, there's not. There's, <laughs> there, there's absolutely nothing back there. My mom keeps asking me to come home, and I don't think she gets it that I'm not going to. <laughs> and in the number two position, please welcome Jackie Crawford. I just feel like if you're in the winner's circle, your face is going to get shown a lot. You're going to get asked to do a lot of things, but there's been a lot of women that have put in a lot of work to see this happen. And not just the women that are competing, the people behind, you know, the production of things, the people who added breakaway to the amateur rodeos, the people who have, you know, dads that turn out and husbands that support their wives to do this. There's so many more people than just the person that gets to be in the picture a lot. Coming in in the number one position... Cassie Latham. So I got a degree in biological engineering and just normal biological I engineering. I actually will start using it here pretty soon, <laughs> but for now I'm just loving just being a breakaway roper. This is something I'll remember for my whole entire life. It's basically all I've ever dreamed of. I mean, all of the work that we put into this, it's not just like you don't just show up and rope. I mean, it's hours of roping the dummy. Um, riding horses, practicing, so it's just anything I could have ever dreamed of.